Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we're here in the studio today with uh, BJ Wright and Tim from Spanish Hills Wellness Suites, a place where we held our healthcare happy hour just last night, and we're going to talk to them in a few minutes. If you're new to the show, uh, welcome aboard, and we broadcast here live in the studio every single Friday morning at 10 o'clock. You're able to connect with us and send us your questions via live chat. Uh, visit us at vegasvideonetwork.com slash chat. If you're uh, slash live, my apologies. And if you're uh, new to the show, uh, please, you could uh, see us at any time live on Facebook. You're able to see it there. You're able to see it on Roku, on our station there. Uh, but welcome aboard. And I'd like to welcome our guests to the studio. BJ, Tim, welcome to uh, the studio. Thank you. Good morning. Good, Good morning great to you. to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, happy Friday to everybody. It's yes. uh, everybody's a little chipper this morning. We had a great event there last night, so it was uh, wonderful. So it's uh, Spanish Hills Wellness Suites. What an amazing place! Thank you for hosting us last night. You did a great job with the event. Uh, God, there must have been a little over 100, 120 people in the house, and uh, you guys went above the call of duty with your catering and everything that was there. So thank you. Well, thank you for uh, allowing us to be hosting your monthly network event. It was so much fun. We met a lot of great people, plus uh, we had fun. That's uh, the important stuff, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think the margarita machine was a big hit. You had two machines over there, plenty of tequila flowing. I, I didn't yeah. see uh, a lot of people weren't feeling a lot of pain by the end of the night. No, not at all. <laughs> How do you celebrate Cinco de Mayo without margaritas? And, so. and, and uh, what, the gentleman that is your cook there, is it Jose or? Uh, Chef Jorge. Jorge. Uh, God, that guacamole was off the It was the, the best charts. I've ever tasted. Yeah, that was amazing, and just the the food and and its entirety. the The food truck outside. I, I've never had a taco so good. With it was like a barbecued crispy chicken. It was. Um, Chef Mike Miner is the owner of Truck You Barbecue, uh -huh. and we were very fortunate. We tried to get him very early on because his food is amazing, and he's kind of a Las Vegas icon. And I don't know if you noticed the truck design. But it was it was pretty cool too. It was uh, designed by a designer from HGTV, so he's pretty hooked up. But I have to say, the food was incredible. Uh, the burnt ends, the tacos, the um, crispy fries. I mean, he really outdid himself. It was amazing, yeah. And it's uh, and the photo booth. How cool was that? I, I that place was rocking every was. single minute of the night. Everybody's up there putting on the sombreros, holding up the uh, whatever the 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 the, the inflatable maracas. Yes. Maracas. <laughs> that, that was that was pretty cool. So that was yeah. great. And tell us about your DJ. I didn't realize you've got an in-house DJ entertainment director. Well, he is our social life director, and uh, he's been around the block a bit. He's also done a lot of DJing. He's hosted a lot of chamber of commerce events so he that was all his own um equipment he sings he, he sings dances. every week that, <laughs> yes he the was residents good. love him i like the taco song when the taco truck <laughs> opened up he played that taco song i think yeah. i saw everybody in the audience kind of rocking a little bit that was a fun 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 event okay so we're gonna jump right in so let's talk a little bit about spanish hills wellness suites it's you know, and I, I know I'm allowed to say these things. It's not grandma's nursing home. Not at all. It was never designed to be that way. Yeah. When you think about a skilled nursing facility, the first thing that pops in your mind, I, you know, when my grandmother was passing when I was a young boy, God, you'd walk in there in the stench of the place and the vinyl floors and... It, Dark uh, hallways, it, no yeah, lighting. Yeah. It just did not do justice. And I, I dreaded going there. And it was my grandmother's last days. And uh, as a little child, I still recall that it, the memories kind of haunt me a little bit. And, you know, we go over here and if you look at the facility, it looks like a resort. Um, this place was absolutely amazing. And uh, God, it, 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 so tell us a little bit about how this thing was laid out with the thought process that went behind this. Because, again, it's not your traditional skilled nursing facility. Well, I have to say environment is really a key element in a person's recovery. And some of the elements that they included in the design, which you saw last night, um, which visually you see it immediately. There are wide hallways, tall ceilings. There's a lot of natural light streaming throughout the building. There's a lot of architectural design, really high-end materials, tile, beautiful tile. Um, we featured some local artists, very inspirational artwork. Um, we really tried to incorporate 
some liveliness. Um, it's very peaceful. It's tranquil, but it still has some vibrancy throughout. Um, there's separate dining rooms. There's TV lounges. There's spa. There's a, a on-site salon. We also have a, a full concierge service for our residents, which is pretty unheard of. That's cool. I mean, we can get um, the acupuncture, uh, teeth whitening, massage, um, separate uh Shopping services, I mean, we really try and go all out to meet the needs of the residents and the patients there, so it makes them feel loved and welcomed and cared for. At the end of the night, I was ready to walk up front and see if I could check in for the night. (laughs) I looked and went, wow, there's a hot tub outside, there's a putting green up front, and uh, Mm -hmm. you've got a beer machine. Uh, beer tap. Beer on tap. Is that for the residents the or is that for the staff? social lounge. Well, (laughs) it's really for the residents, but... It really emphasizes the fact that we're going beyond it, over and beyond what the typical skilled nursing center used to look like. Well, I mean, even just in the name, um, Spanish Hills Wellness Suites. Wellness Suites connotates a different type of environment that we're really looking at the whole person. Emotionally, physically, psychologically. um, We want to get involved in the wellness process with our residents and our patients. Yeah, we're going to jump a little bit later into the show about the orthopedic program. And Tim, you run that program. And it's uh, we're excited to hear about these these suites and what they're doing for uh, folks that are recovering from full joint replacement. So that's going to be awesome. But you had a lot of doctors in the house last night. We did. Um, I'd like to uh, mention a couple for sure that yeah. we had. And I wrote their names down so I didn't forget them. There you go. Um, Dr. Nevins was yeah. there, of course, uh, my mentor. And uh, really important to our program. Uh, Dr. Mathis, Dr. Morgan Stern, Dr. Wax. Yeah, Dahlia. She's a radio rock star out there in the world. And she's uh, over at Toro University now as their community relations person. And, I, you know, I met a, uh, a doctor of oriental medicine last night. And it's so cool to hear what they're doing, bringing that eastern medicine uh, over to the United States and uh, doing a lot of acupuncture. It's uh, We had a psychiatrist in the house uh, that treats uh, patients down at the Clark County Detention Center. I believe last year was the first year that they didn't have any inmate suicides. Wow. Something to celebrate. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, we have so many practitioners doing such great work in town. And it was great to bring all these folks out just to show off Spanish Hills Wellness Suites because not a lot of these folks really would make it to that area of town. And when, when we sent out the invite, they went is this Spanish trails? And uh, so it was pretty cool. And what a, what a great opportunity for you all to showcase everything. It was such a great event again. I mean, I, I, I can't say it enough. The opportunity to show all of these people, all of these wonderful practitioners who are bringing important medicine to Nevada to our facility and to show them how we can help and, and how we plan to be an integral part of this piece of this uh, entire puzzle. Yeah, so talk to us a little bit about the facility, BJ. It's So it's a skilled nursing center, but on top of that, you've got long-term care, you've got rehab suites. Tell us a little bit about how that was designed and what the split looks like and what's the difference between long-term and rehab for those users. And in our audience, it's a bunch of practitioners and healthcare administrators, but give us a little breakdown of what that means. Okay. Well, the building itself is it's a single story and it's 65,000 square feet. Wow, that's big. It's huge. Um, But it doesn't feel that way once you're inside. It's very homey and inviting. There are two distinct separate wings. One is for the um, orthopedic program and the short-term rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Um, That side has its own dining room. It has a a cyber cafe. It has several outdoor courtyards, which we participated in one of them last night. Right here. We got yes. a great picture of it. Uh, and it got a jacuzzi tub in the back. That's the one well, that I was eyeballing earlier. Well, now, let me, it's, <laughs> it's not really a jacuzzi tub. It is a salt water therapy pool. Ah, cool. And the salt water actually provides buoyancy, mm-hmm. and we don't have to use chemicals. And ah. there is a lift chair that will take um, a person right down into the pool. We also have an aquatic uh, trained uh, wellness coordinator that can help with um, classes. Mm-hmm. So it's open to, to both sides. So the... So uh, is that the chair right there then? Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's no diving boards. <laughs> <laughs> no splashing. No Life- splashing. Uh, no candles <laughs> in the pool at night. But um, it's really fun to be able to offer all of these benefits to our, our residents and the patients. 
So on the uh, opposite side, the residential side, it's long-term care, mm -hmm. long-term residential care. So for individuals who can no longer be in assisted living or no, can no longer be at home, it offers a beautiful environment for someone to live out the rest of their life. Yeah. So how many beds in total? 144. And is that split between the the, the, the rehab and the long-term, or what does yes, that look like? Yes, it's about 60% uh, long-term care okay. and 40% um, orthopedic. And there is a service corridor that divides the two wings. And that service door, uh, the corridor, is actually a real great a design piece to the building because it allows the vendors to come in with their private access so they can unload all their product. The staff can be working on projects and nobody will ever see. It's not like carts traveling through the the community. Um, it's, it's Yeah, a great when we feature. loaded in, we loaded in through the back and it yes. was awesome because no one would see it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So kind of behind the scenes. When did the center open up? We took our first page patient in October mm -hmm. 15th. Okay. So it's been so open it, about six months then, yes. a little over that. Yep. And okay. we, um, on April 15th was a big day for us because we mm -hmm. received our, our Medicare um, approval letter. That's big. So it's huge. Yeah. So we're excited about that. So talk to us, uh, you know, where do you get your patients? How do patients find out about the center? And, you know, how do we help you get the, that word out? Well, you know, it's a new place. So, yeah. uh, and a lot of people are not even aware that we exist. So we actually have a great partnership with our medical liaisons who go out to the hospitals, the acute rehabs, the concierge doctors, the private clinics and physicians, uh, community organizations, assisted living, memory care. I mean, we really are trying to be out there and touch um, the entire community. And one of the events like was we helped host last night is a way mm -hmm. to get the word out. Yeah, I think you uh, you got a lot of attention. There's a lot of folks that said, I had not heard about this place. And God, now that I know that, it, that it's here, I'll be able to refer patients over. So We would love referrals. Yeah. So talk to us, you know, Spanish Hills Wellness Suites as part of a much larger organization, Fundamental Healthcare. Yes. Now, I took some notes just to make sure that I got it correct. Perfect. So I'm just going to refer to those. Because Fundamental, it's a... Big organization. I'm I'm familiar with them. I, I've known about Fundamental uh, being here in town for a while, but it's much larger than just Las Vegas. But it seems like a lot of your leadership lives here. Yes, it's a national organization. So uh, the Fundamental Administrative Services and Fundamental Clinical and Operational Services, they provide services to healthcare organizations nationwide, much beyond Nevada. Um, each healthcare center offers a broad range of programs and services to meet the needs of the community it serves. Um, we offer skilled nursing services, subacute care, long term basic medical care, home health care, and specialty hospital services. And we have a number of locations here in Las Vegas. So tell us about some of the other fundamental facilities in Las Vegas. So in Las Vegas, uh, we contract with College Park Rehab Center, Harmon mm -hmm. Hospital. Uh, Horizon Health and Rehab Center, Horizon Specialty Hospital of Henderson, Horizon mm -hmm. Specialty Hospital of Las Vegas, the North Las Vegas Care Center, Mountain's mm -hmm. Edge Hospital, yep. and the Southern Nevada Sleep Center as well. Wow, very cool, very cool. So, and I was talking to, I think it was Lisa King that said that uh, this model that, uh, where, that's the Spanish Hills Wellness Suites, they've built like 14 of these or something around the country. So obviously this is the, the new model. It is the new model. And there's going to be um, one new building here in Las Vegas, and they are finishing up on one in Reno, Nevada. Uh -huh. um, it's it's the wave of the future, and it's it's where we want to go. Well, healthcare is changing. You know, last night we spent some time. One of our um, one of our sponsors last night was the UNLV Hotel School, mm -hmm. and a lot of people go, "Why is the hotel school here at this event?" And we went, well, you know, nowadays it's all about the patient experience. It is. It's all about what does that patient feel? And now that patient, when they exit a facility, they take a patient satisfaction survey. You know, in the hospital environment, it's what we call the HCAP score. And now all of a sudden our payers are starting to tie reimbursements to patient satisfaction. So we looked and we went, wow, what if we talked to the hotel school? And you know what? This is a, an industry that built Vegas around a visitor experience. And what if we could have them start transferring that intellectual property over? And I think you guys are a little bit ahead of the curve because when I walked into that place, again, it's a resort 
feeling. Your receptionist yes. looked up and she greeted me with open eyes and a smile. And behind her, there was a, a water table and a bowl of fruit. And I went, this doesn't seem like your typical skilled nursing center. No, I think some of the issues that we've had in Las Vegas in healthcare is the incomplete marrying of customer service and healthcare. Mm. We're headed in that direction with the bundled payment plans, with um, these other uh, payment models that we're, of course, looking at. But we've kind of drawn this line in the sand where this is healthcare and this is customer service. And in order to fully take advantage of this, those two have to be integrated. Yeah, it's the consumerization of healthcare. Because the consumer is now more and more involved and they're doing things like going up and rating their doctors and rating the facilities. Are you a three-star, four-star, five-star? So uh, I think you guys are are doing a great job with all of that. It's uh, I felt like I was in a resort. I keep saying that, but I just it felt good there. So Tim, I want to dive into the orthopedic program. I know this is your favorite topic. And Scott, if you could roll some of the the B roll of uh, uh, the Secure Track systems, tell us about uh, this particular system. I, it, you just installed it. Give us a little bit of background on this thing. We did. We're really excited to have finished it. Um, we actually weren't sure that the project was going to be finished completely before the event. Uh, I think they finished taping the night before. Uh, last night before last, uh-huh. they finished taping and painting. Uh, the secure track system is incredible. I've really never seen anything like it. Uh, the patients that are anxious about ambulating and are going to benefit so much from this system. Um, it's comprised of a ceiling mounted monorail track um, just above where she is now, mm-hmm. along with the uh, a patented trolley and patient support system that allows a patient to stand completely upright and to walk with a natural gait. They can, it's a padded U-shaped support. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the patient is belted in around her upper arms. And if at any point that patient was to lose her balance and fall, the secure tracks would completely take her weight. It would not allow her to fall. That's great. So does that get the patient up and walking the same day as surgery then? Is that the intent of it? Absolutely. Uh Um, We've seen in the past these caregiver injuries with these gait belts and walkers. Um, They work really well. We're able to get the patients up and ambulating. But um, we want to make sure that our caregivers are safe as well. This takes that caregiver strain out of the equation completely. Um. A study showed that patients who use the secure track systems increase their, are able to increase their ambulation distances uh, during post-operative inpatient care and reported walking with confidence because they didn't fear falling at That's all. That's cool. That's cool. So how big of a role does the orthopedic program play within the Spanish Hills Wellness Suites? Um, it's... It, It is going to have an integral role. We're very new. We took our first patient about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have 16 dedicated beds now, but I'm really excited to grow to 35. And you came out of the, uh, which hospital were were you with that you were involved in the orthopedic program before in the past? I was at Spring Valley. So it's a natural for you then. Yeah, it really is. I worked with Dr. Nevins there. Yeah, so tell us about Dr. Nevins. He's your medical director of the center. Uh, what a great guy. And we'll, we'll get into some details there. But tell us about the how this all came about with Dr. Nevins. And give us a little background on Dr. Nevins because he's such an amazing individual. Absolutely. So Dr. Nevins has been a leader in patient care and strives to make Las Vegas a one of the leading healthcare um, communities in America. His dedication led him to receive the Nevada Heels Award. Yeah. Very prestigious. Absolutely. We were proud to have him. He well-deserved. Absolutely. Very well-deserved. So he doesn't look at his patients as, as surgical patients. He looks at them first as individuals. Um, he, he, doesn't, he looks at the biopsychosocial social model of medicine. So patients aren't surgery patients, and healing isn't a function of biology alone, but it is a function of holistic healing process, psychological and social well-being, as well as a supportive environment. That's a lot of words. A lot of words. Yeah, but it's treating the whole body. Treat the whole body. We don't heal because our body is healing. Mm -hmm. Our body heals all on its own, but it does a lot better if we're psychologically sound, emotionally stable, and we have a healing environment. 
So you had worked with Dr. Nevins before in the past then? I had. And did he reach out to recruit you? Mm -hmm. He did. Dr. Nevins called me, and I was sharing with you earlier that this was not part of my plan at all. I had <laughs> it a, never is. I had a very clear career path, and uh, I'm just so excited to be part of this program now. Yeah, and uh, so go off a little script. Uh, so you and my wife got to meet each other last night, and you had a bond about Germany. Tell us about your experience in Germany, and uh, how did that tie into healthcare? Did it? Or? It did. Uh -huh. Well, uh, sort of. So I was in Germany. I lived in Germany for seven years in Bavaria, southern Germany, uh -huh. and I loved it. I uh, was a soldier. Uh -huh. Thank I you for your service. It was an honor to serve. I uh, deployed to Bosnia in 1996, okay. and I, I sort of got to see the worst that human beings can do to each other. Yeah. And I decided at that point that I was going to uh, to stop being a combat soldier and I was going to be a nurse or a paramedic. But it turns out paramedics don't get paid enough. There you go. Well, that's important stuff. <laughs> and so you've got your, your BSN, right? I do. And uh, working towards my master's currently. Oh, right on. Nice. Continuing education is big in nursing. Oh, absolutely. Oh, BJ, so you're the director of hospitality. What does that mean? What does that involve in... Well, it's kind of a unique position, especially in the skilled nursing arena. Um, but it kind of ties along with what Tim was sharing about Dr. Nevin's uh, philosophy, which is very similar to Spanish Hills. Um, I had a very similar uh, experience that you shared early on. Um, one of my aunties, well, actually two of them were in a nursing home called The Home, Oh, and no. every Sunday afternoon after church, we'd have to pack up and go see auntie in the nursing home. And it was one of the scariest parts of my life. Um, the smells were incredible. It was dark. It was scary for a little kid going into a room, um, seeing somebody just laying there in a bed with no attention. I mean, it was like, I don't want to ever go there. I mean, that's what you, that's yeah. what you're thinking in your life. Like I have those when I get, memories. Yes. And you know, when you're dealing with uh, seniors too, that's the first thing they say, please don't put me in the home. Please don't put me in the home. So one of the goals, not only in the design aspect was to create a resort like feeling, but also to incorporate hospitality and customer service. So people feel um, cared for that their opinion matters that their needs and desires are, are listened to. Um, it's not just about the clinical medical, and it's a huge paradigm shift in the medical yeah. community to shift from medical to hospitality social model. And so we are uh, integrating it into every department throughout Spanish Hills, from onboarding, really uh, focusing on hospitality and customer service mm -hmm. and how we meet the needs of the people that are there, um, going from patient to paperwork. I mean, even in the language, um, just as I mentioned earlier, instead of nursing home, wellness suites, uh, we call it a community, not a facility. Sure. Um, even just having a chef. Oh, my goodness. Having a chef prepare the meals. I mean. Again, I want to check in. Yes. <laughs> I mean, to go from a culinary experience versus a dietary program. Yeah. I mean, they there's a. There's so many changes that are coming. I'm going to take this time to of. put a little plug in again for UNLV. So it's uh, Las Vegas Heels has been involved in uh, working with UNLV, and we delivered last year the first ever in the United States hospitality and healthcare conference. Yes. And it's how do we take this intellectual property that we own in Las Vegas, delivering an exceptional experience, and bring that into healthcare. And uh, we're going to be holding a conference again, the second one, uh, on November 14th where we're going to bring leaders of the hospitality industry together to, to share those best practices. And we've got some folks that have uh, crossed the line that were hospitality executives that are now in healthcare trying to, to really improve that patient experience. So it's going to be a pretty cool conference. Hope that you guys are able to make it out there. And uh, I think it's going to be a big deal. We're definitely committed to participate Perfect. because it's a priority for us. And so that all comes down to another area. And Tim, we're going to get back to you. Talk about, uh, you know, nowadays with these payment models that are shifting and changing, everybody's looking at what they call bundled rates or global rate payments. And uh, there's a bill that came out and, and it just started going into effect called CCJR. And I think that's probably what your orthopedic program's built around. But I want to dig in a little bit on that. Tell us what the CCJR stand for. Oh, all of the acronyms in healthcare. I had to write this down. So CCJR actually stands for Current Concepts in Joint Replacement. 
it, this educational format was formed uniquely around a contribution to the education of thousands of orthopedic surgeons around the world over the last three decades. Uh, the international faculty consists of contemporary thought leaders with the goal of contributing to the highest possible standard of care of orthopedic patients. Wow. So what we've done is gathered all of these amazing orthopedic surgeons. And, and let's face it, these guys are the pros at how we do this. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we've talked to them about how, what are the, the concepts in joint replacement? How are we doing this? Mm -hmm. What can we do better? And how can we integrate this this customer service model? Yeah, so it's a Las Vegas Heels, another initiative. We went on a journey to address our provider reimbursement rates. How do we get our docs better paid? And so we looked at it a couple different ways, but we brought together a panel of experts, and I believe it was October of last year. Uh, and we looked at CCJR because it was just released a couple weeks earlier. They were planning on implementing it in January. Then I think it got pushed back to April. Uh, but this is one of those models that, that if we get better and more efficient at delivering care, we think that we could get the providers reimbursed better. And that's important because our docs just aren't earning the money that they need to to pay off student loans. That's true. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. And what we looked at uh, <coughs> CCJR was uh, another bill that kind of is behind it called MACRA. And MACRA is a, it's how Medicare is looking at this global payment model and basically reimbursing on the episode of care. So talk right. to us about what uh, your program is going to do to really address that, because it seems like it's better for the patient better for the doctor, better for the payer. It doesn't seem like there's a loser in the mix. No. And so I think the the important pieces for this bundled payment, so what it says is essentially that you're going to get paid for the joint replacement as a whole. And that includes the the initial doctor's visit, the the visit to the surgery center to, or the hospital to have the surgery, rehab if it's required, home health, all the way leading up to this after your surgery appointment with your surgeon following up to make sure that everything's done. And that that all is one big bundled payment. Pretty good stuff. And I think that's an area that Las Vegas can take a lead. We've got uh, yeah. two new med schools being built mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. To add to our incumbent med school, Toro University, that's putting out 135 new doctors a year. So by 2021, 2022, we've got a pipeline of new doctors coming out. And if we could start training them on this new bundled payment model, I think Las Vegas can have a competitive advantage. And we look at what Dr. Nevins is doing with full knees and hips, and I think that that model allows for medical travelers to Agreed. come to Las Vegas. Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. Well, we have a lot of travelers coming to Las Vegas. Why not participate in what we have to offer in the healthcare? Yeah. I, know. I would love to hear that someone traveled to Las Vegas because they'd heard about Dr. Nevins mm -hmm. and his program and Spanish Hills Wellness Suites, and they are here to have a joint replacement yeah. surgery. I think we're going to see it. <laughs> I and do. I just got the word we're coming to an end. God, it's so, uh, this program goes by in a lot. half hour. We, yeah. So I want to thank both of you for being on the program today. It's a pleasure to have you here on Inside Medicine. We're very grateful for Spanish Hills Wellness Suites for hosting the event last night. Uh, for our audience that's out there with us today, we broadcast here live every Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you could tune in to VegasVideoNetwork.com slash live. Uh, again, every Friday at 10 o'clock. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And again, thank you all for being on the show. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us.